You know, after the January 6th Capitol Hill riots, Democrats suddenly have discovered law and order. They no longer want to defund the police. Donald J. Trump called for the insurrection against the United States of America. You talked about Al Qaeda. What has he done in terms of incitement, right? That Osama bin Laden didn't do. Each of these people should be shamed and they're gonna go back, you know, to the Olive Garden and to their the Holiday Inn that they're staying at. The way that we in the media speak about this is so important. Today was terrorism. We call them terrorists. Terrorists. Domestic terrorists. Domestic terrorists. Domestic terrorists. These people are not Americans. Uh, Kevin yeah. McCarthy was on Fox calling this un-American. Marco Rubio. I don't know. There's a lot of empty rhetoric. There's a lot of empty concern. Holly, I should say, of all people had the nerve to condemn the violence that we saw today. Josh Hawley should resign in ignominy. Ted Cruz as well. But honestly, Mitch McConnell too. Shame on them. Shame on those senators. They sided with domestic terrorists yesterday, and we won't forget it. And this in no way absolves them of the sin uh, and the sins that they and the president had committed against this country. And if Donald Trump Jr., Rudy Giuliani, and Donald Trump are not arrested today for insurrection and taken to jail and booked. It was encouraged by our Republican colleagues. And that is why every single one of them, especially because they have been the ones trying to steal this election. That's why we are calling for them to be removed. But then Trump supporters come in and you open the doors for them. But back during the summer, not so much. I want to be clear in how I characterize this. This is a, mostly a protest. Uh, it is not, uh, it is not generally speaking unruly. That ain't a riot, what we're seeing right now in Minneapolis. They are strictly principled anti-fascists, and they've taken a principled stand to stand against white supremacists and white nationalists wherever they may show up. I argue to you tonight, all punches are not equal morally. It says it right in the name, Antifa, anti-fascism, which is what they were there um, fighting. Listen, there's... You know, no organization is perfect. There was some violence. Any reasonable person would say we shouldn't be destroying other people's property. But these are not reasonable times. But thank goodness for the looters, man. And please show me where it says that protests are supposed to be polite and peaceful. I don't care that much about statues. Shouldn't that be done by a, respectfully, shouldn't that be done by a commission or the city council, not a mob in the middle of the night throwing it into the harbor? People will do what they do. You're seeing behind me is one of multiple locations that have been burning in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Do not get it twisted and think that, oh, this is some something that has not never happened before. And then this is so terrible. And where are we and these savages and all of that? This is how this country was started. People get mad and people get sick of it. People are risking covid to explain to this country that we're fed up. Most of the major movements in American history have started at the grassroots level and at some point have turned into direct conflict with American government. So remember your history before you judge your present. Thuggishness is thuggishness wherever it comes from politically and, and we should be the first to call it out. I disagree. Can you say double standard? That the, any rejection of this kind of violence needs to be unequivocal. You can't say, well, this happened, but, you know, you've got to say it's wrong, anybody who resorts to violence. Uh, we've called it out, by the way, last week. What happened uh, was, was an insurrection. The people that stormed the Capitol, that attacked our Capitol Police, over 50 Capitol Police officers were injured in that attack. I mean, if you're going over police officers and crawling through windows, you're not a guest in a building anymore. Uh, you've, you've literally violated the law that many of them have already been uh, caught and are being arrested uh, as needs to be the case. But what we didn't see, and this is really the point I was making, is that we call it out when it happens on both sides. When you see all of these Democrats that are only calling it out now, they did not call it out during the summer. In fact, some of them were encouraging some of the violence we saw over the summer, fanning those flames. Uh, you, you can't have it both ways. You've got to be consistent in calling out violence. None of us should support that. President Trump was impeached a second time, this time for incitement of insurrection. Now, when Congresswoman Maxine Waters urged supporters to surround Trump cabinet members, let them know they're not welcome anywhere anymore, was that incitement of insurrection? And so let's stay the course. Let's make sure we show up 
wherever we have to show up. And if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. And when Senator Chuck Schumer, in front of the Supreme Court building, told Kavanaugh and Gorsuch they're going to reap the whirlwind. Was that incitement of insurrection? I want to tell you, Gorsuch, I want to tell you, Kavanaugh, you have released the whirlwind and you will pay the price. You won't know what hit you if you go forward with these awful decisions. You remember when the mayor of Baltimore wanted to give rioters space to destroy? We've, we've had these types of conversations before, uh, and I've made it very clear that I uh, worked with the police and instructed them to do everything that they could to make sure that the protesters were able to exercise their uh, right to free speech. Uh, it's a very delicate balancing act because while we uh, try to make sure that they were protected from the cars and the other you know, things that were going on. Um, we also gave those who wished to destroy space to do that as well. Space to destroy? But when it came to that horrific Capitol riot, the Democrats suddenly became Dirty Harry. Many even said that the protesters were putting their whiteness over democracy. Uh, I want to ask you about a comment uh, Nancy Pelosi made uh, about um, that these these protesters, these rioters, these insurrectionists, quote, have chosen their whiteness over democracy. Uh, is that what you think happened here? Oh, many of them. Absolutely. I can't tell you how many times in my life uh, I've heard people say to me, uh, to my teeth, uh, so to speak, uh, that that's what's paramount with them. So when black protesters take to the streets, are they putting their blackness over democracy? Now, notice when Trump says fight, that word means incitement of insurrection, provocation of violence. We fight like hell. Didn't he also say he wants the protesters to peacefully and patriotically make their voices heard? Or did I imagine that? I know that everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. So when Trump says fight, he means burn the place down. But when Democrats say fight, well, they're just saying be aggressive, be enthusiastic, be passionate. When we have been attacked and when our ideals and fundamental values are being attacked, do we retreat or do we fight? I say we fight. Yeah. And I intend to fight. I intend to fight for our ideals. I intend to fight. Are you willing to stand together and fight for those people who are struggling? Are you willing to fight? If you don't get what you don't fight for, I am in this fight. But this is a fight for our country for the oath we take to protect and defend the Constitution. And as Alan Dershowitz points out, a man who twice voted for Barack Obama, even Donald Trump is entitled to First Amendment rights called freedom of speech. But what I worry about deeply is the impact of impeachment on the First Amendment. For a hundred years, the Supreme Court and other courts have struggled to develop a jurisprudence which distinguishes between advocacy and incitement. And in the leading case of Brandenburg versus Ohio, a unanimous decision, the Supreme Court basically said that what President Trump said on Wednesday, as much as I disapprove of it and many people disapprove of it on its merits, uh, is protected by the First Amendment to the Constitution. It comes within core political speech. And to impeach a president for having exercised his First Amendment rights would be so dangerous to the Constitution. It would lie around like a loaded weapon, ready to be used yeah. by either party against the other party. And that's not what impeachment or well, the 25th <laughs> Amendment were intended to be. Incitement of insurrection. I'll give you a far more worthy candidate, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Alec Baldwin. Please, I, I gotta ask you, it's no secret that you're very political. 
Yeah, you're a very political person. It's no secret yeah. that you've actually uh, had some associations with uh, with the Clintons. Yes. That you're a, a liberal man. And I thought, you know, today this is a historic day, and you're one of the most politically active, uh, you know, actors out there well, right I now. Was, what do you, you think? I just want to say this. I was in Africa. I go to Africa. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, I am in Africa. Yeah. For three months, I'm in the bush, and I come back. I come back here. I come back to what? I mean, what is happening right now, as we speak right now, the Judiciary Committee, the president has an approval rating of 68 percent. I mean, the president is very popular. Things are going pretty good. And they're voting to impeach the president. They voted on one article of impeachment already. And I come back from Africa to stain dresses and cigars and this and impeachment. I'm thinking to myself, in other countries, they are laughing at us 24 hours a day. And I'm thinking to myself, if we were in other countries, we would all right now, all of us together, all of us together would go down to Washington and we would stone Henry Hyde to death. We would stone him to death. Wait, shut up. Shut up. No, shut up. I'm not finished. We would stone Henry Hyde to death. Then we'd go to their homes and we'd kill their wives and their children. And Twitter didn't ban him. We have it deep in our souls, and we fight. We fight like hell. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. I'm Larry Elder, and we've got a country to save. I will see you next time.